Oh, good morning. Section 56. In June 1831 in Kirtland, Ohio, Ohio, Fort Ezra Thayer and others. And the prominent doctrine or theme is the Lord commands and revokes. Take up your cross and follow me. All right, so um, Thomas B. Marsh and Ezra Thayer were supposed to be missionary companions, and they were supposed to go on a mission to Missouri, but Ezra Thayer wanted to build up his kingdom. He wanted to be financially secure before he went, and that was not what the saints were doing at the time. And so Joseph asked the Lord what should be done, and this revelation was given. Um, he obviously repented because later on he served as a missionary seven months later in 1832. Um, uh, let's see. So one of the verses that struck me, uh, was where the Lord says, I, the Lord command. Like, that is the statement. I, the Lord, wherefore, I, the Lord, command. And for some reason, it really struck me. And I was like, okay, why is that hitting me so hard? I think it's it's just like this blatant, flat-out statement that it's my job to command. Well, it's his job to command, and it's my job to obey. Um, like... He's the commander, and I am the soldier. Anyways, um, this earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Also, it is his gospel and his plan of life and salvation. In his love and concern for us, he is free to give us those commandments that he knows we can keep and thus receive those blessings that are predicated upon those commandments. In his mercy, however, he often revokes his commandments when his children cannot or will not obey them. Otherwise, he brings his children under even more severe condemnation. Okay, um, and then in verse 16 it says, Woe unto you rich men that will not give of, of your substance. And I just wanted to read a quote from Joseph F. Smith. The rich are as dependent upon God for the light of his spirit to guide them and for the blessings and ordinances of the holy priesthood as are the poorest of the poor. The Lord in his regard is no respecter of persons. And then there's a quote here, woe unto the poor men. But not only the rich are to blame. The poor are also responsible for many of them are not humble nor honest. Many of them are dishonest. Many are as greedy as any miser and many are lazy or given to violence on the slightest provocation a united order cannot be built up of mammon slaves and belly worshippers be they rich or poor <clears throat> both classes must repent and enter upon a new life before the highest ideal of a human society can be realized and that is where i think most people who who see socialism in a good light, fall short. You cannot build this ideal, equal, no respecter of persons community on people who are greedy and who are lazy. And most of the people who think socialism is a great idea are lazy and greedy. And then... And then there's a quote from Joseph Smith uh, regarding verses 19 through 20. The Lord shall come and his recompense shall be with him. God holds the reins of judgment in his hands. He is a wise lawgiver and will judge all men, not according to the narrow contracted notions of men, but according to the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or evil, or whether these deeds were done in England, America, Spain, Turkey, or India. He will judge them, not according to what they have not, but according to what they have. Those who have lived without law will be judged without law, and those who have a law will be judged by that law. 
We need not doubt the wisdom and intelligence of the great Jehovah. He will award judgment or mercy to all nations according to their several deserts. Their means of obtaining intelligence, the laws by which they are governed, the faculties afforded them of obtaining correct information, and his inscrutable designs in relation to the human family. And when the designs of God shall be made manifest, and the certain and the curtain of I can't pronounce this futurity be withdrawn, we shall all of us eventually have to confess that the judge of all the earth has done right. I don't know why that word trips me up. It feels, uh, what is it? It feels foreign in my mouth. Futurity. Uh, for some reason it trips me up. Anyways, um, in here it says we need not doubt the wisdom and intelligence of great Jehovah. And I think that's one of our many downfalls is sometimes we're like, really? Really? that's who you're going with for this calling or that's the lesson you want to teach me really I think uh, sometimes we we doubt a little too much I think it's human nature to doubt but we need not doubt the intelligence and wisdom of the great Jehovah all right I have to go to work I will see you all later